Hello, Bakers. Happy Thursday, and welcome to today's Thought Leadership Thursday with Vantage Food. Vantage Food is a market leader offering customized solutions, in-house research and development, and an extensive portfolio of food processing ingredients. They offer a full line of clean label solutions, including allergen-free, non-GMO, organic, kosher, and halal. Vantage Food also offers mallet and Amonaco brand equipment, which are known for reliability, speed, and precision in the baking and food processing industry. Today, we are joined by Laura Williams. Hi, Laura. Hi, Lynn. Laura is the Applications and Technology Manager of Food at Vantage. Laura brings with her a decade of experience developing specialty ingredients and applications. She has a bachelor's degree in material science from the University of Wisconsin, Eau Claire, and an associate degree in nanoscience technology. And she currently serves on the board of Wisconsin IFP. Welcome, Laura. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and who is Vantage Food? Yeah, thank you for having me, Lynn. I'm very excited to talk about icing and glazes and stabilizers. It is literally a very sweet topic to discuss. So a little bit about me. I am the Applications and Technology Manager, as you said. So my role involves innovation, product development, product optimization, and working with customers to educate them on how to use our products, um, how to troubleshoot, and provide solutions to challenges they may have. Uh, the Vantage Food primary business um, is oil and water-based release agents, equipment solutions to apply those release agents in bakery settings, emulsifiers, defoamers, shortenings, icing and glaze stabilizers. I know that Vantage Food is really well known for release agents, but tell me why are icing and glaze stabilizers important? So... Lynn, I know you travel, so you can probably relate to the story where, you know, maybe you're tired and just want a little sugar pick me up or you have some cravings. So you stop at a convenience store or at one of the little stores at the airport um, to pick up a snack. And so, you know, maybe you'll reach for a package of glazed donuts. And as you're holding the package in your hands, anticipating the sweet goodness that's in the packaging, you look closer and realize that the donut icing is cracked or maybe it looks sticky, you know, so you might think twice, maybe put the donuts back on the shelf and grab the honey buns that are next to it. You know, and you might realize, look at closer and see that the icing looks good, you know, so you're happy and can take your, take the item and purchase it. Or maybe that icing also looks cracked and just looks a little off. So you know, at that point, you might put both of them back and decide to go with something else, which like maybe beef jerky or something, you know, I don't know. Um, so this is where stabilizers come in. Stabilizers stabilize the glaze or icing to prevent cracking, weeping or crystallization, which can create that um, negative visual appeal. And this is important for products to have because so many packaging right now, so much packaging has clear windows. So the consumers can see the product, which can be good, can entice the consumers to pick up that product and buy it, or it can be bad if there is an issue with the um, glaze or icing. So the stabilizers keep the icing and glaze looking good, looking appetizing. It combines eye appeal with superior sensory experience. Um, the stabilizer helps the icing and glaze to resist cineresis when packaged, even through freeze, freeze and thaw cycles. So the glaze retains smooth, uniform texture, creating a delicious looking product. So you used a word cineresis there. So yeah. you know, some people might not be familiar with that word. Can you explain a little bit more? Because I believe that is key to a good stabilizer. Yeah, so the cineresis is really just with the moisture um, coming out of the icing or you know it also is related to moisture migration so like we'll sometimes see the moisture migrate from uh from the, the substance the icing and glaze is on into the icing and glaze which then impacts the um well i'll talk about that more in more detail when talk about ingredients but it can create an impact of the the glaze stability yeah so um 
I hear you talk about icing and glazes. Is there really a difference between the two of them? Yeah, that is a great question. Icing and glazes is typically used interchangeably. Um, and you'll notice in this presentation, I'll refer to them either individually or both, but it usually refers to both of them. Um, at the basis, icing and glazes are both water and sugar solutions, but they have various textures and viscosities. So we have this graphic and it shows the main differences between icing and glazes. And on the graphic, they also include frostings, which is a relative to icing and glazes. But today we'll be talking specifically about icing and glazes. Icing and glazes both contain dissolved and undissolved sugar. The undissolved sugar is suspended throughout the icing in a crystalline form. And so the size and amount of the undissolved sugar determines the properties of the icing and glaze. As you can see in the graphic, glazes have lower viscosities, higher moisture content, and higher dissolved to non-dissolved sugar ratios. Icings, on the other hand, have higher fat, lower water, and therefore have higher viscosities and lower dissolved to undissolved sugar ratios. Sounds great. So what are some of the common ingredients in icing, glazes, and stabilizers? Yeah, so ingredients, um, we kind of see them as different levers that can be pulled to get the desired functionality of what the icing and glaze what the customer is looking for with the icing and glaze. Is it appearance? Is it shelf life? Is it a combination? So going back to the beginning example of the donut that you picked up in the airport um, shop, if a customer came in with that donut and that concern, we would partner with them to holistically approach what levers may need to be pulled to get the desired outcome. Uh, we do this because stabilizers are very technical. So we are going to partner with the customer throughout the project to make sure they have the technical assistance needed to optimize the stabilizer usage. So first, the customer will set the framework of what they want. Um, is it going to be for a donut? Is it a honey bun, a cinnamon roll? Like, what is the product? Uh, what are they looking for as far as, like, shelf life? What type of packaging are they using? Um, different packaging parameters. It, all of this goes into discussing the setting the framework. And then we can, once that is established, we pull the different ingredient levers to create a solution that meets the customer's needs. So those ingredients in more detail. Um, sugar, sugar is a big one. Sugar provides sweetness, it impacts the textual properties, it affects set times and the finished appearances. So sugars used include powdered sugar, granulated sugar, high fructose corn syrup, and dextrose. Each type of sugar has a different functionality in the icing and glaze, but it also brings different sets of pros and cons. For example, powdered sugar. It creates a shinier and smoother icing and glaze, but it's also more difficult to stabilize. Granulated sugar controls heat and set time, but can be grainy if not properly dissolved. Corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, and dextrose provide humectancy, shine, and economics. It's an economical option. However, too much humectancy can draw on moisture, which causes the non-dissolved sugar to solubilize and create a syrup and glaze breakdown on the product. So we have a picture here of three different donuts. Um, each one, the glaze on the left has the least amount of sugar and the glaze on the right has the most amount of sugar. Each glaze was made using the same amount of water. So in each wow. donut, and yeah, and each donut looks delicious. Um, yeah. It shows the difference between what the sugar content can do and the, what the undissolved sugar can change the um, appearance of the glaze. So the higher That's the sugar, true. yes, the higher the sugar, the lighter the color due to the sugar reflecting and randomly scattering light. All, all of them look delicious, but you know, once we understand where the customer needs and where they want to be, we can design a stabilizer that fits within them. That's great because, you know, um, using stabilizers are challenging. So, um, you know, bakers are going to have all these questions, right? You have to use them correctly. Yes. And um, if the bakers viewing this segment have any questions, how can they find out more about your solutions and what you have to offer? 
Yeah, well, they can absolutely reach out. Um, they can uh, through the Vantage website, where uh, Vantage is also a sponsor of Bakerpedia. So our information, I believe, is on the Bakerpedia website. Yep. And you can um, check out our LinkedIn, and you can also send an email to info.food at vantagegrp.com. That's great. So, Laura, thank you so much for joining us for today's Thought Leadership Thursday. That's such awesome information that you just shared. And I'm now going to go look for donuts that don't have weeping cinnarisis. Sounds <laughs> great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.